So, like a lot of you, today, Thursday, the, um, hold on, Thursday, February 8th, 2024, like a lot of you this morning, I saw the Knuckles TV trailer uh, for the series. And I have to say that what I saw, I thoroughly enjoyed, and seemingly everybody else did. Because the vibe the trailer gave off to a lot of people is it felt more like a a trailer for a movie instead of a limited series that you're going to see on Paramount+. Plus. And for anybody that wants to know, apparently it's going to be streaming all three, all six episodes, because it's a six-episode event as they're promoting it. They're going to stream all six episodes on April 25th or 26th, around that time frame on Paramount+. Plus. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to, you know, hear that. A lot of people would rather it be, you know, done in a weekly, you know, standard, like what Disney Plus does with The Mandalorian. But here's why I think they're doing it. I think they're doing it because, one, it gives people that option of streaming it all on its debut week or its debut day and night. And it also gives them the option to go that traditional weekly route. Like, they'll watch the first episode on, you know, on the 25th or 26th, and then they'll wait till the first week of May to watch the second episode and so on and so on to kind of give them that traditional sense of new episode every week. The other reason I think they did it as well is because they know that many people may not want to do that, you know, whatsoever, you know, e- you know, by going either way, you know, they may not want to do that. And the planning, in my opinion, to release this series as we get closer to the movie, release this series on a weekly basis, you know, on networks like Nickelodeon, you know, maybe Paramount maybe even CBS, to kind of get, you know, a lot of traction leading into the third film. So to me, they're doing this, again, to give people that option of, hey, you can watch it all in one day, you know, one day into night, if you will, one night, or you could choose to go the weekly route or daily route, that's your choice. But I think at the end, but I think at the end of the day, figuratively, at the end of the day, uh, I think what Paramount, I think what Viacom is planning to do is release these um, episodes of the series on a weekly basis, you know, as we get later on into this uh, into the year and closer to the release of Sonic 3. I think that's what's going on here, honestly, I really do. Now. What did I think of the trailer overall? I, well, honestly, I thought the trailer looked great. I thought the trailer presented itself well. It definitely shut a lot of the doubters up about what was going to you know, happen in the, in the trailer, what it was going to be about. I loved it. I love the fact that they're going to go down a route for the six episodes to where Knuckles' character is going to develop, maybe evolve a bit, and realize, hey, he shouldn't, you know, like, hey, he doesn't have to always be serious and doesn't always have to be set in his ways. He can actually, you know, change, you know, and adapt, you know, like Sonic and Tails and others have. And... You know, maybe that's where his uh, leader, the elder of the Echidna clan, you know, who's going to be in this series as well, and he's voiced by Christopher Lloyd, per- uh, Panamac, or Mac as he's called, is going to come into play. Maybe he's going to tell Knuckles, hey, look, you know, even though we are Echidna warriors, we don't have to be serious. You know, we can learn to adapt. We can learn to basically, you know, basically, you know, adjust to the new life that surrounds us. You know, and maybe that's why he's going to be in there, to kind of play a key role. Now, I'm not going to be surprised either if maybe he knows a little bit more about Longclaw. Like, maybe, because I was thinking about this. What if he reveals something to Knuckles about Longclaw? Like, maybe he says, oh, by the way, tell your blue friend that his mother figure, his guardian, is still alive, but just, you know, kept in a healing stasis. Like, you know, they have her locked away to heal up or something. You know, that, that could be something that they reveal, and maybe they will. We don't know. But, you know, overall, I like the idea with, of Knuckles kind of slowly developing into, you know, his character, into someone that's going to be more adaptable, more like, yeah, I don't really have to be this way and everything. I, you know, I could still be this way, but I also can learn to relax and, you know, just enjoy the day and have fun and all that. 
we do get a new villain in here called the Buyer. He's from Game of Thrones. He's played by an actor from Game of Thrones. And apparently he used to f- work for Robotnik. You know, he apparently used to work for Robotnik. Looked like he was his tech supplier, you know, of all that tech we saw, you know, in the, in the movies. Obviously, this guy was his, you know, inventor, his supplier, his snivelly, if you will, outside of Agent Stone. Um, you know, or his storyline, if you want to look at it from a IDW perspective. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he want, he's going to basically take a similar premise that, you know, uh, Robotnik did in the first film, and that's basically collect all the different quills, all the, the well, I wouldn't say the quills, but the, like, little pieces of fur, you know, from Knuckles that I guess he discovers, he finds, you know, just scattered about or something, he's going to use them to power up, you know, all the other machinery that, you know, Eggman, Robotnik, you know, had used or was going to use and and so on. And he's got some agents. One of them is played by Kid Kuri. Kid Kuri, Kuri, I pronounced that wrong. I know I pronounced that name wrong. But he's going to be an agent in there. And then you got another girl. Her name is Agent Wallaby. Um, so she's, you know, and I don't know what, how she's going to be. It lo- I don't know if it's the same actress at the end. Maybe not. But they're going to be working for this buyer guy to try to capture Knuckles so he can cipher his energy or something for the, you know, his devices. Um, we are going to see Maddie in there. And Maddie obviously is going to play a role of trying to get Knuckles to either leave the house, leave the premise, because one of the scenes in the trailer is he sets up the living room as an ancient echidna battleground and everything. And it's just like, what? <laughs> and, and, and Maddie's like, oh, no, 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 we're not doing that here. Hell no. And I think what they're going to do with Maddie's character, too, is she's basically going to develop, you know, depending on how much she's here uh, in the series, she's going to develop to the point that she's just going to, you know, not only let Knuckles know, but she's going to let Sonic and Tails know, hey, look, I love you guys, but every time you live here, something happens to our house, and we can't have that happen anymore, so you have to, you know, basically either find a place where you can, you know, explore, be yourself, run around, but also to take any battles that may you know head your way in that direction but do it in a loving way is what i'm thinking you know the other character that Duckle is going to be paired up with is wade the deputy from the first two films to james morrison's character uh tom i think that's his name and or donut lord as they call him <laughs> Uh, But yeah, Wade's going to be partnered up with him, and Knuckles is going to train Wade to be more braver, more of a warrior, more stand-up-ish for himself, if you will. And the ending of the trailer has Wade basically get lassoed by his foot on, you know, via motorcycle. And I guess Wade's wife is like, are you going to go rescue him? And Knuckles, he's drinking a pot. He's not drinking a cup. He's drinking a pot of coffee going like, nope. He's got to learn to rescue himself, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> that, that's a funny part there, too. Um, overall, overall, I loved what I saw with this trailer. I really did. And to me, I'll be honest with you, not only do I think this is going to be a huge hit for them, and not only do I think over time they're going to weekly, you know, put the episodes out on Paramount Network, Nickelodeon, and maybe even CBS to help build hype for the, for the film, but on but if I'm <laughs> but if I'm gonna be honest here but if I'm gonna be honest here, I think this was originally meant to be a movie. I really do. I think originally this was supposed to be a Paramount Plus exclusive as a film. Now why do I say that? Well, one, you look at how, you know, the budget is pretty much the same, you know, for the effects, the CGI and all that. It feels basically like it's the movie, you know, made for te- but a, as a television series. And, you know, when people saw the short, you know, that accompanied Sonic 2, you know, on the DVD, a lot of people figured that was going to be the animation they would use here, but no. They're going full-on feature length in theaters, you know, effects and animation for this series. So, you know, so to me, that, you know, further, hold on for a second. That further, you know, in my opinion, backs up the, the fact that in belief, fact and belief, that I think this was originally meant to be a film. 
I really do. But then they decided, now we're going to go the six-episode route because, as I mentioned, it'll make it easier for them to basically put each episode weekly, you know, on uh, CBS, um, Paramount Network, and Nickelodeon, you know, in the next several months, you know, later on the year, uh, you know, to build hype for the film. I mean, look, they're doing that already with shows like Yellowstone. Yellowstone used to be a Paramount exclusive, Paramount Plus exclusive, and all the episodes were weekly, and all the episodes came out on the same day. But what did they do when they took the Kevin Costner show to CBS and Paramount, you know, Paramount Network? What did they do? They divided those episodes that all came out at once into weekly episodes. That's what they did. And I think that's what they're going to do here with Knuckles later on in the year to build hype for the film. That's why I believe they went to, you know, they went the direction, you know, they went the direction opposite of what Disney did with Moana, Moana 2 that is. Because originally Disney was going to make Moana 2 a limited Disney Plus series, but then I guess they figured, you know, they had a lot going on for it, and maybe they needed as much positive, you know, press as they can get, and financial, you know, maybe box office, you know, put in a favor, that they decided, nope, we're going to go and make this a movie, and that's what they've done. On, and the trailer apparently is going to debut, the full trailer is going to debut on the, you know, on the day of the Super Bowl. But... You know, to me, you know, to me, uh, Paramount and Viacom, I think, went the opposite, if you will, of what Disney did with Moana, is what, is what I'm saying. Because, like I said, Disney was going to go limited Disney Plus series, said, nope, we can make a movie out of this, helps us get po- positive press, and maybe give us, a, give us back a big financial uh, return, you know, at the box office. Paramount, and I'm trying to find the right words here to say because I'm doing this, un, you know, you know, unfiltered. Uh, Paramount decides to do the opposite and take potentially what was a movie, you know, direct for Paramount Plus and divide it into a series, you know, so that later on they can, like I said, as we get closer to the film, they can put the show out weekly on CBS, maybe Paramount Network, Nickelodeon, and build hype, you know, for the series itself. You know, for the movie, I should say, itself. You know, so I think that's why they decided to do it. You know, basically, they went the opposite direction of what Disney's doing with Moana 2. And, and again, when you look at the trailer, you kind of get that vibe. You get that, you know, you get that sense of, yeah, this was supposed to be a movie on Paramount+, Plus, but they've changed their mind because, you know, hey, you know, later on, they could just put it on CBS and Paramount and Nickelodeon and build, you know, and I'm, I know I'm being repetitive, you know, when I say it, but build hype for the film. But overall, I liked what I saw, and there are people wondering, you know, what the end credits will be like. Well, the end credits for the final episode, I think, are going to tie into the Shadow film, I mean, into the Sonic 3 with Shadow, because I think Shadow is supposed to maybe show up at the end or something like that. But people are also wondering if maybe we're going to see Knuckles take his place as the Guardian of the Emerald, you know, on the, uh, you know, at the temple and everything that we saw in Sonic 2. And then that's going to lead us to seeing maybe um, a certain character that associates with Knuckles nowadays uh, show up. And maybe we just see the landing of, of this character. And what we see upon the landing is white boots with little heart shape. See, you know, a little like heart shape at the end of the heels, uh, you know, at the in the toe area of the of the shoes. Like we see team white boots with a little pink in the shoes. You know, people are speculating, oh, we might see her show up. That's confirming she's going to be in the film too. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, there are Easter eggs in there. Like you know, one of the things that we see in the trailer is Knuckles runs by a sign. And that says goal, and then when it turns around, it has Knuckles' picture, just like in the classic games and everything. Um, you know, there are, you know, there are, there's a character, I don't know if it's the lady at the end of the trailer, but there is a character called Sally in here. So to me, that's a nice Easter egg to um, Sally Acorn. Although although some might deny that, but I think it's too much of a coincidence. Like, why would you cast somebody in the role of a character named Sally unless you knew what you were doing? Uh, and I know some people are wondering, hmm, what, what if it is Sally? Unfortunately, I don't think it is. I think her name is being given to um, that lady at the end. I'm assuming that's the lady at the end to kind of, you know, at the end of the trailer. 
I'm a, you know, I think they're doing that as a bit of an Easter egg. Hey, I could be wrong, you know, but it, and it would be a huge surprise, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, overall, I like what we saw. We'll get. I mean, obviously, Knuckles is gonna Knuckles is gonna have his hat that we saw in the Sonic OVA. That's cool. You know, that's nice to see. Uh, nice little touch there. And he's going to have some fire gloves. I think he may have had those before. The fire fist. I think he may have had those before in a game. I have to go look. I think he had them in Sonic X, I believe. I think he had them in Sonic X. And I think he had them in the Archie Sonic. So definitely you can see Jeff Flower is do, or Jeff Fowler is doing everything he said he promised he was going to do. He was going to incorporate every kind of Sonic medium uh, into the movies, into the spinoff shows and stuff uh, that he can. And we'll see an issue with the Knuckles um, series. So, you know, we get, we're getting a lot of that. I like that. I enjoy that. And I can't wait to see what else we're going to get. I mean, obviously, they gave him his gliding. Because you see Wade, you know, riding on him in the trailer, um, you know, as he's gliding down. So it's good to see that. And, I, again, I can't wait to see what else they, should, what they, else they bring to the table. And, again, I think this Param, uh, Paramac, Paramac uh, or Mac, the elder of the Echidna tribe, is going to let us m know more about, hey, there are others like us scattered about the multiverse. Maybe they might mention multiverse, not saying they will. But maybe he even alludes to, oh, Long Claw's still alive. She's just in a healing comatose state right now, which to me would be an interesting callback to a certain mother figure that was in the same situation in the Archie books, but may, hey, maybe that's just me stretching for, you know, <laughs> stretching for, hey, little Easter eggs here and there, but you never know, you never know, but overall, I, like I said, overall, I liked it, and I can't wait to see it, but now that brings up the big question, that brings up the big question, um, Will we see more of this in the future? Will we see more? Well, apparently there are plans, if rumors, rumors and reports are to be believed, there are plans to try to expand the Sonic verse uh, in this movie TV, in this movie streaming TV format uh, in the near future. How they do it, we don't know. But one of the ideas that has been thrown around and discussed is we're going to get a shadow series. And I'm assuming the Shadow series will be just like Knuckles, very limited to like six, six episodes, maybe eight, because, hey, it's Shadow, so he might get maybe two more episodes. But there is talk of doing a Shadow series, maybe a movie, but mostly a series. There is talk of doing something with Tails, you know, down the line as well. So there are ideas being floated, discussed, maybe put into the pre-production phase as we speak to help, you know, really expand the cinematic streaming, the cinematic streaming universe, if you will, of Sonic the Hedgehog. Now we do know, because it's obvious, no, obviously no secret, and they're not going to let us know anything until when, the, until possibly when the trailer comes out. Excuse me, I was trying to think about what I was going to say. Uh, until the trailer comes out. But obviously, this idea is popping around of, okay, we've got to bring Amy Rose in, so we're going to have to do a series on Amy Rose. And, oh, we've got Rouge coming in, we're going to have to do a series on Rouge. Maybe we do a Thelma and Louise kind of thing with Amy and Rouge, we'll see. Um, oh, we've got to bring in the Chaotix, okay, the Chaotix comes in. You know, we've got to do something with them. Um, Vanilla, Vanilla and Cream, yeah, you could bring them in, and maybe you have them incorporated with Rouge and Amy. You know, that's something to do. But... Here's the thing, if, I'm, if we're getting Easter eggs and we're getting little snippets, little elements, not just from the game, you know, not just from the games, but we're also getting little snippets and elements and Easter eggs from all Sonic media, then to me, you know, the door is open. The forbidden door, Pandora's box, whatever you want to call it, is open for anything to be, ha for anything to be possible. And I believe, you know, as time goes on, we're going to get... You know, Sonic-inspired series being announced with characters that are not in the games, but you know they are owned by Sega, and you got nothing else to do for, do with them right now. Might as well do something with them. And I think over time, give it time, be patient. We're going to get announcements of a Sally Acorn show, maybe a Bunny Rabbit, maybe Sally and Bunny. Who knows? You know, we're going to get something. I just got a feeling we're going to get something down the line. Did. I just get this feeling, I really do.
You know, I just get this feel, feeling, I really do. So I've got a feeling we're going to get things like that down the line. Obviously, we've got to get a Tangle and Whisper, you know, show going. You know, a Tangle and Whisper and Lanoline, or oh, I think that's her name, Lanoline? Yeah, a Tangle and Whisper Lanolin series going on, so we got to do that. Mostly Tangle and Whisper, but we got to do that. You know, Blaze the Cat, Silver, I mean... All these characters, you know, that are part of the games that, you know, are associated with Sonic in some capacity through other forms of media, you know Jeff Fowler and his team are looking at this. They're probably talking to Ian Flynn. They're probably talking to Sega of America. And they're saying, okay, who, who else do you got that we can bring into the Sonic cinematic streaming universe that we got going on right now? So you know a lot of this is probably being discussed and talked about. We just don't know because they, they won't, they're not going to say anything. We are, in an, we are in a time frame, folks, where now a lot of places where information would normally get leaked out are being very top secretive you know, about, what, you know, about what they're going to do in the near future with certain properties and franchises. But... Overall, give me your thoughts on that, and give me your thoughts on what you thought of the Knuckles TV, uh, or the uh, Knuckles trailer for the series coming up in April, at the end of April. What are your thoughts on it? You know, what else do you think we'll see Easter egg-wise, element-wise, hint-wise? What are your thoughts? And until next time, guys, I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. I am out.